Did you know that the first Japanese tea house appeared in the 15th century during the Sengoku period? It's a feature that is quite common in lots of Japanese, traditional Japanese gardens and is something that I wanted to create as part of this Japanese garden uh, at home. So here it is, this is the first of two parts. Uh, in the first I'll be going through some elements of Japanese architecture that you traditionally find in a tea house and how you can incorporate it if you want to make one at home. And the second part will be to show, sort of sharing a little bit of the techniques of what's involved in constructing a tea house out of wood, slate, etc. So uh, join me for a quick tour of this uh, tea house and we'll just go through some of the common elements that you tend to find in Japanese architecture. One of the common features that you tend to find a lot in tea houses is what's known as a tokonoma or an alcove. And this is an area of the tea house which is traditionally where you display scrolls, manuscripts or flowers and an arrangement of that sort of thing uh, to greet guests as they came into the tea house. Tea houses were traditionally used as a part of a ceremony known as the tea ceremony where the host would invite guests and they'd sit down, drink tea and it would form part of a ritual and they would discuss various matters of life. The tokenoma that I've tried to include in this area serves purely as access for a garden shed. As you'd expect, it's a garden, you need somewhere to store tools, etc. So I've sort of stored all of that behind there. And uh, another common feature that I haven't included on this tea house is what's known as a row or a sunken half. And that's somewhere where the tea, tea would be prepared in the centre, traditionally where members and guests would sit around the outside of it. But for practical reasons, uh, and especially here in the UK, I don't plan to have any fires near this wooden shed. So uh, that's something that I didn't really include, doesn't, doesn't need to have it. Uh, but of course, if you want to go ultimate Japanese and want to create your own hearth, then go for it, why not? In terms of the dimensions of this shed, however, I would stress that it's important that you factor in what the limitations are in the building regulations wherever you are. Uh, I know in the UK there are limitations on the height of the construction that you make in the back garden and also how close it is to the boundaries of your neighbours. So factor in those two things and uh, cost as well because costs will rise quite rapidly, particularly if you tend to go for something like I've done with a slate roof. If you want cheaper alternatives you can start to look at felt material. So one of the elements of Japanese architecture you might be familiar with are the shoji windows or shoji screens and that's something that's yet to be added to this building but uh, if you subscribe to the channel below rest assured you'll be getting a notification when these take place. Now one of the key features when you enter a tea house, if you look at many of the uh, photographs of traditional Japanese tea houses, just do a quick Google search to see them, is what's known as an injiriguki, and that's a low entrance where members would be invited to enter into the tea house at quite a low height, and that was purely to make it a bit of a separation between the inside of the tea house and the outside world. You'd have to be forced to duck underneath the entrance to get inside. So uh, I've created this little entrance here purely to get the lawnmower in and out of the shed. Uh, I don't expect anybody who visits me to get in and out of this small cubby hole, which is probably, uh, they're probably sighing a bit of a relief. But um, if you want to include something like this on your architecture, it's quite easy to double up. Maybe you need storage in the garden for furniture or a barbecue or whatever. Another traditional uh, feature of Japanese tea house architecture are these bars that you tend to find in windows. Uh, quite often they're made of bamboo, but of course in this country sourcing the larger diameter of bamboo canes can be difficult. So in this case I've substituted it for some hardwood broom handles, just pre-drilling into the tea house there and securing them into place with a little bit of glue and a bit of stain and they've come up a treat. So I hope you like this quick tour and uh, if you'd like to see last video just click the link up there that's creating a bonsai bench for less.